Hey, it's Ethan Skolnick for Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel here at Kaseya Center for Media Day 2425. I've got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. I got Alex Lito. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. I do not have Jimmy Butler currently, although we're working on that. He might just walk by as we're here. Uh, that is the big story of the day so far. Typically, the top players on the team will speak at the podium to us, but Jimmy was not here in time. Uh, apparently, his flight got delayed from Paris. And so as of right now, we don't know if he's in the building or not, but we were told he may speak at some point later today. So let's talk about the players who are here, because obviously the Jimmy storyline is going to get a lot of attention. Um, I think what's going to stick out most to people today, guys, is Tyler Hero. And it was how definitive and calm he was and polished about his understanding that, as he said, we're the best coach in the world. We've got the best coach, uh, excuse me, president GM talking about Pat Riley. We're going to allow them to make the decisions about what my role is this season. Alex, that is a little bit different than his tone yeah. in past years, but at the same time, it does seem like behind the scenes, they're assuring him he's going to be a starter because Eric Spolcher said, we want to look at Rozier, Hero, Bam, and Jimmy together, and that would seem to be in the starting lineup. I was going to tell you the exact same thing. That's the read. As soon as, as Spo said, you know, Terry, Tyler, Jimmy, and Bam, mm -hmm. and he was trying to like guard against it, like, oh, you know, it's not definitive. This is <laughs> There's no fifth yet. I got the feeling that there was already some sort of conversation had, you know, I don't know how many players, but I think some guys were spoken to, uh, including Tyler, as far as who's going to start or not. And I think there was a certain level of like kind of confidence when Tyler was speaking there where it's like, I'm going to let Pat and, and Spo, right, the best <laughs> in the business decide. I think he, I think it's because he knows already that he's going to start. He's like, yeah, these guys look at me as a starter. I'm a starter here. I think that's part of it. But I do think he's been saying the right things ever since, you know, Terry was uh, acquired. And I think his play showed it as well. He was willing to defer um, and, you know, said all the right things today. There was a certain calm, like you mentioned about him. It wasn't defiant in any way, right, mm -hmm. when asked about being a starter. Um, and just, you know, he said all the right things. It's whatever it takes to, you know, help the team win. So let's get to some of the guys. Well, first thing, Bam spoke. Um, not a lot new there as far as role. He talks every day. We're used to it at this point. I mean, Spolstra said that he wants to see him have career bests in all categories, which is not just offense, but also defense, leadership, and everything else. But we just, we've just we done a bunch of one-on-one -on -one interviews, which are going to show up here on the YouTube channel and on the podcast feed soon. Um, I, I was struck by a couple of things. Today. First, we talked to some of the young players, obviously, and some of the guys who are competing for roles, like Josh Christopher or Nasir Little. But I, I was just taken by Jovic's uh, demeanor. I guess like uh, we joked with him that he's kind of like a veteran now, but it feels like that. And he seems to have a real understanding that his role is going to be different with certain groups. What did you take from what Nico said? I mean, I think we, you even phrase, you, you'll see it on the episode. He phrased the question of like him being the guy that pops or him and Hawk as being the guy that pops that moves this guy up, that moves the team up. He kind of has the feeling like he's trying to just play his role. Like he's trying to play around the Terry Tyler, Jimmy Bam thing that that Spo was talking about. It's like, okay, number one, he wants to hunt, the smaller guys they, the teams put their weakest or smallest defender on him put him in the post when that's not happening i have to space the floor i have to be a good kind of spacer for the guys that want to drive on the other end of the floor he feels like kind of he can be a one-on-one -on -one defender that can that can switch around and, and ultimately be a like a semi-wing player like we he, we joked around that he's like he's not a five because that was kind of his thing coming in but he's almost pushing up to trying to be a wing player um that maybe when we Here's the here's the thing I look at it when Jaime talks we always say he's the, the high floor guy and we limit his upside But I think there really is upside for Jaime when he talks like about the, the other things he could do for this team being the punch off the bench He talked about it before like Starting is always a goal, but it's not something he's worried about He actually enjoyed coming off the bench and he probably would rather close mm -hmm. than anything as for Jovic I think we don't give his credit enough for how high his floor could eventually get to I think he's gonna be a solid role player a solid rotation player around their main guys especially if he's hitting 40% from three, if the defense grows and the other stuff, that if he's finishing at a higher level or making guys pay uh, smaller guys, like this really could look different. So that's kind of what stuck out to me is I think maybe we're, we're underselling just this, so just being solid. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think one of the things he talked about that was interesting was he's talked about Boston and yes, Tatum and Brown, but he felt the guys that really hurt them were their complimentary players. He kind of started uh, with Derek White. I, I think, this entire media day is going to be colored by one thing. Where's Jimmy at? And where's his head at? 
And, you know, that's I think that's the question that has to be answered. But I do think what we're seeing with this group and as the players walk in, we haven't got a chance to talk to Kalel Ware yet, but we talked to Kashad Johnson. We talked to Pella Larson. They do have an infusion of young talent and these guys are going to get opportunities. And so there's com- competition for role there, but also there's competition for that last starting spot and there's competition for the closer. And, you know, Haywood Highsmith said flat out to us, I'd rather close than start. Hakez was just asked about starting. He says not really that much of a concern, but he feels his game can grow. Jovic, when we asked him about closing, he said that's where you prove yourself. There's big on that. They're competing to close games more so than they're competing to start games, and we're focusing more so on the starting because that's what people do. But I'm curious to see, can Eric Spolster roll out Rozier, Hero, Bam, and Jimmy at the end of games? And if so, who's that fifth piece? Because I think that's the rhythm that they want to get into. Because this team's going to play a lot of close games, I think. And we've talked about where they are in the Eastern Conference. They're going to have to find a way to win those games. So we'll have more on Jimmy Butler. As this comes up, Ethan Skolnick with Alex Toledo and Brady Hawk. Follow five on the floor.